How you doing, Jessica? Jay, I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for showing up and being here. Hopefully, uh, we can uh, give these guys some good information. All right, so let's uh, get into it a little bit um, about the industry itself. Um, all right, I'm a new guy. I don't know diddly squat about thing. I saw some great videos on this channel called Seven Figure Moving Academy. Um, you know, um, you know, and uh, so I'm now I'm thinking, well, I want to be a mover, and I've and I've done okay, but I'm thinking about starting. A, a full service portion of the moving business. What what would be your first piece of advice? It's a great question. Um, if I'm talking to a mover for the first time and, and they're really new to this and they're not sure what to do, um, I kind of start like this. I, I tell them that, you know, it's very expensive to be a motor carrier. You know, you have to apply for the authorities. You have to check off all these boxes. You have to go through audits every couple of years. You have to pay for your insurance. Um, but I can go through and explain the insurance and the authority because I think that's what they struggle with the most. So one thing that people don't know is certain states like Pennsylvania or Virginia, they require state authorities. So in right. addition to the, the authority that you get with the Department of Transportation, you also need authority with a state. So I'm going to explain that because this is really something that trips somebody up or people up sometimes. So the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, FMCSA, that is the governing body over Department of Transportation. They make sure that everybody is compliant with regulation. When you haul for hire across state lines, it's called interstate commerce. So if you're picking up in Pennsylvania and delivering in Maryland, you need a DOT number with MC authority. Mm -hmm. If you're starting in Pennsylvania and delivering in Pennsylvania, you need authority as well with the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission. So you right. need those numbers on the side of your truck. And you, with those authorities come insurance requirements. So the requirements are different between Pennsylvania and the federal government. They're also different between other states like Virginia, because Virginia requires state authority as well. So in Pennsylvania, you can get authorized with 300,000 in liability and 5,000 in cargo, but that'll never pass the book in the state of Virginia. So there's a lot of different rules and regulations when it comes to hauling for hire. And, and I'm going to probably say that a bunch of times when somebody's giving you money to do something or to move a product for them, you're hauling for hire. So if you're collecting a fee to provide that service, you need to have authority and you should have that state number and or that MC number on the side of your truck. Another question I get pretty often, Jay, is about a DOT number. Well, I don't ever leave the state of Maryland. I don't, I don't need an MC number. Well, that's correct. But your vehicle weighs over 10,001 pounds. And the federal government says, if it weighs over 10,001 pounds, you need a DOT number on the side of your truck. Mm -hmm. So it's free. You can apply for a free DOT number when your vehicle weighs more than 10,001 pounds. But if you're going to haul for hire across state lines, then you need an MC number as well. Right. I don't know if you're following along, Jay, but this can be very confusing. It's a lot of information. So when these guys call me for the first time and we open up this conversation, I can be on the phone with them for 45 minutes, an hour or longer, because that's how long it takes to explain all of this. Right. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, that's one reason why I wanted to do this podcast. Because, yeah. You know, I worked in the moving industry for 15 years. You know, I, I started from labor only to full service, you know, and I started with nothing and I did it every which way you can, you can do it. That was wrong. Right. <laughs> so I don't want people to do that. So let's start off with the basics. Okay. I'm just starting my company. What kind of insurance, all the insurances in buckets do I need, right? I'm just sure. starting off. I might, I'm looking at being a full service, but right now I'm just starting off as a labor owner. Give me all, give me all 
all the options that I, that I need to run my business. Okay. So with labor only, the insurance that you should have is general liability. General liability insurance protects you as a business from any lawsuits that can be filed against you from property damage or bodily injury. For example, if you're on a job that has stairs and there are small children there because this family is moving and your movers, your laborers are moving up and down the steps with furniture and a three-year-old tries to run quick between your legs and you knock him down the stairs and he broke and the child gets injured, their, their parents can sue you because essentially you hurt their children. That's how their attorneys are going to play it. So th and that kind of stuff does happen. This policy would also protect you if you scratch somebody's hardwood floor or you drop a piece of furniture down the steps and it goes into the wall, puts a hole in the wall. General liability insurance will protect you for that. It will also protect you if you have like a warehouse and somebody comes there to visit, to drop off a check or something and they slip and fall on the ice and they sue you, that would also fall under general liability. So it's the most affordable coverage that you'll purchase. Um, and for a first timer that's starting out with maybe him and one buddy, you know, just offering some labor only services, it'll probably cost you about a thousand dollars a year. Okay. That's general liability. What about business like insurance? What kind of a business, just general business insurance, what kind of would I need for there? Um, well, that's going to fall under that same title of, of general liability. Different insurance companies can write it a different way. So sometimes you'll see what's called a business owner's policy. It's called a BOP policy. A BOP policy is going to provide some additional protection, maybe for some tools or some type of tangible property in addition to the general liability. But general liability is split into four different parts. It's typically written with a million dollars per occurrence. So anytime somebody files a claim against that policy, there's a million dollars available. But then it's written with a $2 million aggregate, which means $2 million is the most amount of money that insurance carrier is going to pay in a 12-month period. There's also built-in coverages for medical payments, um, personal and advertising injury, or um, products and completed operations. A completed operation claim... Um, is typically more suited for a contractor. Like if you have somebody come to your house and build a deck, um, the job is completed, you pay him for his job and you, he leaves and then you have a party that weekend and the deck falls apart. That's a completed operations claim. Um, typically on a moving job, you're not going to have that because they're going to notice the damage right away. Um, the, there's typically not a completed operations claim for a mover, but um that would be your general business insurance, any liability claims that come across the business. As your business continues to grow and you need to purchase other coverages, you know, you'll need auto liability. You can't purchase auto liability insurance without a vehicle. Some people don't have a vehicle. Well, what do I do? How can I get authority without having a truck? You can lease a truck as long as it's a long-term lease. So Ryder, Penske, Enterprise, local truck, renting, truck rental places, you sign a contract with them to lease the same vehicle for a long, longer period of time, we can get you insurance and get you authorized to drive. But the auto liability insurance is based on VIN number. It's, they're called scheduled unit policies. You must have that vehicle scheduled on your policy for coverage to apply. That's why you can't go to U-Haul every morning and pick up a different truck. You need to have your own vehicle to get those authorities that I talked about earlier with Pennsylvania, Virginia, or the Federal Department of Transportation. Mm -hmm. So you need general liability for your business as a whole. Auto liability is going to protect um, any bodily injury or property damage caused by that vehicle. So whether that vehicle is involved in an accident, um, if you injure someone or damage someone else's property, it would fall against the auto liability policy. That policy is also going to respond if you are loading and unloading into that vehicle and you injure yourself. So, and that's only for the business owner, not for the employees, but Jay, if you were running your own business as a mover and you yourself were loading something in and out and you got injured, the claim would hit your auto liability first. 
and then it would roll over to your work comp or to your health insurance, whichever is next in line. Um, the, so auto liability is required for your motor carrier authority. So in addition to that, cargo insurance is required. Cargo insurance is going to protect whatever freight you put in the back of your truck or trailer. So as I mentioned earlier, Pennsylvania only requires 5,000 in cargo. The state of Virginia requires 50,000 in cargo. So it really just depends on where you're located. I don't sell $5,000. The least amount that I will sell is 25,000. And I will explain why. If you have a $5,000 policy and you have a $1,000 deductible, there's only $4,000 available now. You know, what are you going to really file a claim for against that policy? If you damage somebody's $4,000 sectional, are you going to file a claim for that? Because we know that most of the time movers are going to handle these small claims out of pocket. I encourage my clients to do that. What these $25,000, $50,000, $100,000 cargo policies are for is if you roll that truck down the hill or if it catches on fire. You know, if you're in a bad accident and everything in the back of that truck gets shaken around and all their wooden furniture gets broken, you as a business owner don't want to have to pay for that. But if you damage somebody's $1,800 TV, just go buy them a new TV. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, it's a good business practice. It's going to save you from insurance surcharges down the road for filing too many claims. Um, and a $5,000 policy just doesn't make sense. It costs about $1,000 a year. There's minimum premiums with a lot of um, these companies. So for example, you know, ABC insurance company won't issue a policy for less than 750 bucks. So if you already have to pay 750 bucks, why not just pay 1200 or 1300 to increase that limit where it's really going to protect you. So those are the first three insurance policies that any mover should need when they move to full service. You start out labor only, general liability, absolutely, you should have it. Auto liability you need once you purchase or lease a vehicle. You also need that for your um, governing authority. And then your cargo insurance is required for authority as well. Over and above that, Jay, once you have those three, I mean, you're authorized to operate, you, you know, have basic protection as a business owner. When we get into the discussion about workers' compensation insurance and protecting your employees, it, it becomes a much bigger conversation. Um, and we can talk about that a little bit if you want, but um, it, it's usually more involved and it come, becomes very confusing. So... <laughs> Right. Well, we will, I will want to talk about work, workman's comp and business insurance, but I just wanted to get those three buckets. So basically yeah. general liability in case you break someone, someone gets hurt, you know, um, as a, one of the guys asked, will it cover a dresser that gets damaged going through a wall? No, the dresser is covered under cargo insurance. Right. But the wall itself. Would the be wall covered. is covered under the general liability. Yes. Right. So your insurance, quote unquote covers that, but it's going to be under each different aspect of the policy. Correct. And, and to piggyback on that, Jay, when you first start out in this business, all three of those coverages are going to be written with different insurance markets. I have not found a program that will ensure a new venture mover for all three lines of insurance. All of my clients start out with progressive auto insurance, then their GL is somewhere else and their cargo is somewhere else. It's very unusual. Remember I said at the beginning of this interview, moving and storage is so much different than trucking. Mm -hmm. Trucking is not like that at all. You can call Progressive right now and buy a truck policy for a trucker's package policy with GL coverage and cargo bundled in there. For a mover, we can't do that. Well, people ask me, well, why not? Well, the risk of a mover is much greater than that of a truck driver. They're operating heavier equipment, yes, but they're going to a loading dock. Somebody else is unloading or loading that truck. When it comes to a moving company, you guys are running up and down stairs. You're going around corners. You are lifting things that are oddly shaped, that are heavy, that um, you know are cumbersome. And then you are the ones loading it in and out of the truck and packing it in there and you know, it's, it's just more opportunity for the cargo to get damaged, more opportunity for the employees to get injured. 
Right, right. Okay, so what kind of limits? I mean, to for someone to be full to be legally insured, what is the limit for that? And then, what kind of limits do you actually recommend for like cargo liability, etc.? Okay. So like I said, the general liability for you as a business owner, it's going to be written in that standard 1 million per occurrence, 2 million aggregate. And it's pretty standard across the board. That's what most businesses have. Um, so that's what I sell. Again, that's going to cost you about $1,000 a year to get started. The auto liability requirement is going to vary on what you're doing, but I always recommend a million dollars. So a couple of reasons for that. The Department of Transportation, to get your MC number, they require a limit of $750,000. The pricing difference from $750,000 to a million is usually very minimal. And if you are going to get into contracts to haul freight for local companies or you know, offices, commercial moves, apartment complexes, condo associations, and they ask you for a certificate of insurance, they're looking for a million dollars. So that's typically what I quote and what all of my clients have. I think I have one client that still has the 750,000 limit and that's okay. You know, I'm not going to slap his wrist for it, but you know, the goal is to get everybody to that million dollars. And I will add this as well. That million dollars is available for bodily injury and property damage resulting from a claim. If somebody is going to hire an attorney and sue you, they want more than $750,000. They want as much money from you as they can get. So I've seen claims pay out a million dollars. They've maxed out. I've, I've seen it happen. Um, it's most popular with serious injury. So in this business, you know, serious injuries take a lifetime of care. And, and that's why those people go after those, those higher limits. So as far as auto liability goes, I, I recommend a million dollars. Um, it's a little bit different than your personal auto insurance. Typically, personal autos are split limits, and I won't get into that too much, but it's a million dollars to pay for any bodily injury lawsuits and any property damage. Property damage should be a fence, another vehicle, a mailbox, a telephone pole. Um, and then the cargo insurance, like I said, I don't sell $5,000. The, the lowest amount that I will sell is $25,000. I think it's a good place for you to start. If you're starting out with a 17 foot box truck, $25,000 is fair. Um, but again, you're probably going to have more than $25,000 worth of stuff in there if the truck is full. So you want to try to remember that if you wreck this truck and it's totaled and it catches on fire or whatever, everything that's in there is gone. Those people are going to want their stuff back. And this is the reason why some carriers, insurance carriers, do not write cargo insurance for household goods because we don't know the value of people's stuff. When we get to their house to move it, it's already in boxes. Some of it's already wrapped. You know, you got the grandfather clock, you got a piano, you got a weightlifting bench, or you have antiques that were somebody's grandmother's grandmother's from way back in the day, and it has no value to it. You have expensive pieces of artwork or things that just can't, we can't put a price tag on. So you want to try to remember that when you're purchasing this insurance and when you're loading these trucks, try and take an inventory and be like, okay, yeah, I think we're getting up there. Um, so I do recommend that you purchase at least $50,000 worth of cargo. That coverage is applied per vehicle. So if you have one truck, you're purchasing 50,000 for one truck. If you have two trucks, you're purchasing purchasing 50,000 for each truck. So as an example, if I can get you a cargo insurance quote for $1,500 a year, you might as well just double or triple that for however many trucks you have. So that's how much the rate is for one truck. So um, hopefully that answers your question about, you know, my, my recommendations, but yeah, I, I would recommend that you purchase at least 50,000 in cargo and a million in auto liability. Right. Now that also comes up to the question, you want that million dollars in liability and that higher cargo, because if you want to rent trucks and you want that on your insurance, you're going to need at least a million dollars to rent the budget or Penske or whatever, as well as the high cargo fee. 
Yes. Yeah, so when you lease these trucks, they don't care about the cargo. They don't want to protect what's inside it. You're the one that has to worry about that. But yes, Ryder, Penske, and Enterprise, they do all require a million dollars of liability. So it'd be just that instead of getting the 750, if you want to be able to get insurance and use your insurance on a rental truck, it'd be good to just have a million dollars in liability. Yeah. I mean, to me as an agent, 750 just doesn't make sense. Um, for a lot of reasons. I mean, like I said, if somebody's going to hire an attorney and sue you, they're, they're going to want to attack the, the full value. And those attorneys know what's available to motor carriers. They know that you have the ability to purchase a million. So transportation and transportation attorneys understand this business just like I do. You know, they just like it in a different way. <laughs> right. We just got a question and it says labor only movers cannot get cargo. So they do not have coverage available on clients items correct that is correct cargo insurance as i stated is purchased per truck it is a sign it's a scheduled unit policy just like your auto liability so we list those vin numbers on that policy we list your drivers on that policy you know your drivers and your vehicles must be on there in order for coverage to apply right all right so if they're labor only the only th the only thing that they're liable for is the things that they they personally break. If it's in their hands and they drop it, they're liable for that damage that they created and nothing more. Correct. And if, if that were the case, I believe their their general liability insurance could respond to that. But let me explain this a little bit further because in in insurance, we use this term all the time. Care, custody and control. If I have care, custody, and control of your belongings, I'm responsible for it. So when it comes to these labor-only businesses, you a lot of you guys, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to slap your wrist. I just know how it works. Um, a lot of the guys, that they, they call themselves labor-only, but they are going to U-Haul, and they are getting a truck, and they are moving those goods. That is A, illegal, and B, you don't have the proper coverage to do that. So if you are going to have care, custody, and control of someone else's personal belongings, you need cargo insurance. It's the only way to protect it. And the only way you can get cargo is to have a vehicle. So try and keep that in mind. You can, you can load and unload U-Hauls for somebody else all day long. You go to their house, you load up their truck, that customer drives it themselves, and then you follow them and you unload it. That's a traditional labor-only business. But if you're physically driving that truck, then you have care, custody, and control of those people's belongings. Their homeowner's insurance is not going to respond. Their renter's insurance is not going to respond because they didn't have their own belongings in their control. Right. And that's, that, and that's a common question I get in my videos that talk about this. Um, they go, I, I rent from Penske or I rent from U-Haul and I get their insurance, so I'm covered, right? And I'm like, no, not at all. Completely 100% false. You are not insured because they sometimes they ha somehow think that they're licensed and insured if they get the insurance for the U-Haul truck. And that's not true. Correct? That you are exactly correct. The insurance that they sell is liability insurance. It will protect against wrecking that vehicle or bodily injury um, for the person driving it or, or I'm sorry, hurting someone else. Um, but that's it. It's, it's just like the car insurance that you have on your personal vehicle. It is, it's a million dollar policy, but it's, it's not to use that vehicle to haul for hire. That's not what you're purchasing it for. You have to remember if you're going to haul for hire, you're going to collect a fee to drive somebody's stuff across state lines. You need to have authority to do that. That authority is in place for a lot of reasons. It, it doesn't only protect the public and the public's personal belongings, but it protects you as a motor carrier. It, it really does. If you go on to FMCSA and you read about this, those regulations are there for a reason. And if you were on the other side of the, the fence when it comes to the moving company and you weren't the moving company and you were the customer, you would want to make sure that your stuff was protected too. And, and I tell the public all the time in, in Facebook forums and when I talk to people in the, in the general public, vet your, 
bet your movers. If you're in Pennsylvania, you have full access to the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission list of authorized household good movers. If they are a true motor carrier, they will be listed on Safer Snapshot. It's all public information. I can I look up moving companies all the time that I see on Facebook. I'm like, oh, you don't have authority. You don't have authority. I'm not going to put them out of business, but you know, it. I'm always going to share this information. It is very important to me. Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, so let's get let's let's take this back a little bit. We're still we're brand new. We're starting off as a labor only, right? Um, and we've moved up. We've we've done enough moves. We've got enough reputation, right? But we still don't have a truck. But we want to get into the full service game because that's that's where the money is. That's where the bigger profits, right? So supposedly, that's not right. true. But supposedly, that's where the big profits are. At. Um, I don't have a truck, so you kind of you mentioned early about leasing. But what other ways can we get insurance to do full service moves if we don't have? A, a leased truck or owned a moving truck? What, what other ways? That's a good question. So 